So I texted Tyler the other day about doing the crossover, and he said, this could get really ugly. Right, buddy? Absolutely. And uh, with the DeAndre Hopkins trade, I think that's proof that it might get pretty gross. Lions and Titans, we talk it next. You are locked on NFL crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, everybody. Matt Derry, Locked On Lions. Tyler Rowland, Locked On Titans. It's a Thursday crossover brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Yes, Prize Picks is the best. Download the app. Use code Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Five and one Lions riding high after a big win over the Minnesota Vikings on the road last Sunday. Meantime, the Titans have dropped two straight, five of six to start the year. And we're talking about it here on Locked On Lions and Locked On Titans. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us both out wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Tyler, this is a softball, I guess. But uh, right off the shoot here, biggest t- uh, Titan storyline is it appears now the fire sale is beginning down there. Absolutely. And DeAndre Hopkins going to the Kansas City Chiefs is a move. Honestly, Matt, that I've been talking about for a few weeks now. It's a move that needed to happen for the Tennessee Titans. I recognize it's a tough pill to swallow for certain fans. The Titans made a lot of free agent acquisitions. There was hope coming into the year, but reality is reality. And the Titans needed to look themselves in the mirror and see we're a one in five football team traveling to play one of the top three teams in the entire NFL. We're probably not going to win that game with Will Levis on the sideline anyways. So going to one and six, the, the move right now is to trade off any of these veterans that you can. And I think getting a fourth round comp- uh, conditional pick back could be a fifth, but I, I bet that it'll be a fourth. Hopkins will have playing time with Kansas City. That's the right thing to do. And uh, again, it is a tough pill to swallow for fans, but this is a move that makes sense with DeAndre Hopkins set to be a free agent after the year. He was never going to come back to a 3-14, and 4-13 and 13 football team at 33 years old with a banged up knee. That didn't make sense either. So the Titans don't make the same mistake they made with Derrick Henry, and they actually get something back for a veteran that's going to walk in free agency. All right, let's piggyback, because obviously half of your audience here that, that is listening to you and, and watching you right now is Detroit. Mm-hmm. The Lions need edge rushers. I mean, can we get Harold Landry here? Can we just get a couple of guys? I mean, I know Terrell Williams, the Lions D-line coach, loves Jeffrey Simmons from their days together. I'm not sure that's happening, but... No. Could a net, could the next shoe drop being an Arden Key and Harold Landry somebody just staying in Detroit after Sunday? Well, I think Arden Key would make some sense. Uh, Harold Landry is a bit of a pillar of the defense. I know that some people are are ready to walk him out the door, but I don't think that that would make much sense for the Titans. I think you keep Simmons, you keep Sweat, you keep Landry, and you look to add another edge rusher. But Arden Key is a cheap player, only seven million dollars in salary. Each year, it's probably a little bit less than that when you consider the signing bonus. So Arden Key would be a player not only that would make sense as a veteran who can come in and produce right away and not be expected to be a top guy, but part of a rotation. And his salary makes it possible for our team to trade for him in the middle of the year. So uh, if the Lions came calling for Arden Key, I would pick up that phone and I would make that deal. What do you think the Titans would ask for him? Late round pick? Yeah, I'm thinking sixth round pick. Uh, probably we're seeing a lot of these in season deals be conditional deals because you want to make sure that you you get return on your investment if you're a team doing some sort of rental situation. But Arden Key has another year on his contract after this, which makes it not so much of a rental. You can keep him next year for a really really cheap price. Probably I'm guessing his salary is around four to five million. Uh, since the signing bonus is paid by the Titans, it's not something. There's no guaranteed money there that the Lions would have to take on. So uh, I think that probably a a conditional seventh that becomes a sixth rounder if he hits certain playing time incentives, I think that would make sense for both sides. All right, take me through what's happening down there. We we talked about the biggest storylines being, it appears now, you know, fire sale. Why is this team one in five? We, we, We saw Levis early in the year. Let's be honest, Tyler. There's not a lot of Detroit fans that have seen a ton of Titans football this year, but We've seen those Will Levis highlights where he's throwing the ball to the other team. What's happened down there? Well, I think that it's a combination of multiple things. Uh, Brian Callahan's taken a lot of heat in the last few weeks, and he has had some bad games. But as somebody in Detroit, Dan Campbell went 3-13 and 
and his first season. And I'm sure yeah. there were a lot of people in Detroit saying, let's fire this guy. He's in over his head. He's not an NFL head coach, blah, blah, blah. So I've been preaching patience with Brian Callahan. He's 39 years old. He's a first-time play caller, a first-time head coach. He's going to improve. But the right tackle position is not going to improve. And it has been something hard for the offense to overcome. And then, quite honestly, Will Levis lost this team a couple of games that they should have won at the beginning of the year. This team isn't a one and five football team, but that's where they're at because their young quarterback made some massive mistakes early in the year and their young head coach made some mistakes in the last few weeks. That is part of being a young football team and having core pieces of your team be inexperienced. It, it's just the reality of the situation. So it's weird because the Titans have played some good football. Like they, they've been in three of their losses, one score games. They go up 10 to nothing on Buffalo and they're leading going into halftime. Like, there's a lot of good football to look at, but they're a young team that just can't finish, and some of their key players on offense simply aren't getting the job done. The defense has been pretty good, but if you've watched any team with a bad offense and a good defense, you know that the defense eventually gives out under the weight of the offense, and that's what's happened to the Titans more often than not. Tyler Rowland locked on Titans. Matt Derry locked on Lions. A Thursday crossover brought to you by Prize Picks Lions to host Tennessee. Uh, Sunday at Ford Field, they can't score, right? I mean, I, you look at the, you look at right. their offense, and you look at the, the the scores, and just you know, I watched the Colts game a little bit, and man, I mean, Indy wanted them to. Indy was handing the Titans a game, like right. here's the ball, and it yep. was three and out city. Like that's the issue, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of it has to do with the second half too, Matt. The Titans have a positive point margin in the first three quarters, and they're like minus forty to fifty points. In the fourth quarter, they simply cannot close a the game. They simply cannot finish. And I think a lot of it has to do with execution. The Titans have a lot of pre-snap penalties. They have holding calls. Like they set themselves back in the second half. I don't know if it's emotions. I don't know if it's nerves or whatever it may be. But in the fourth quarter, teams just figure them out. Brian Callahan is trying to scheme up things, and I think he's doing a really good job with the scheme, if I'm honest. Fans won't want to hear that because right now, fire Brian Callahan is the, the outrage of the week, but a, a lot of it is execution errors. The offensive line starts to break down. Teams understand they can bring pressure on the Titans. They start blitzing on early downs to disrupt the timing of their gap runs and their play action, and it kind of just falls apart, which sadly, honestly, has been the story of the Titans for multiple years now is that they come out with a decent plan and then they just cannot do anything in the second halves of these games. So the Titans are going to have to find a way to either get up way more in the first half or find a way to start scoring in the second half, or they're just going to continue to lose week in and week out. It's too bad. Cause that's uh, obviously got the new stadium coming and there's been a history of winning down there. And that division obviously is, is pretty wide open with how disappointing I don't think Indies look good. We know about Jacksonville. Right. Houston's been disappointing in the last yep. few weeks, right? So, I mean, you mentioned earlier the, the, the fans being angry, but this is a rookie coach. You want to talk about a name that a lot of people didn't even know, obviously Bill's son, but I, overall, I mean, is there any chance this Sunday that they they stay close or you think it blow up? Well, I think the one thing is the Titans do generally do a pretty good job stopping the run. Um and if you can stop the run, uh, keep Jared Goff in third and long situations where he's not able to, to get off that play action. I mean, Jared Goff has been so incredible this year. Um, but if you get him in third and long a ton, you get some pressure on him, there's a chance that the Titans could force a turnover or two and, and make things work. You'd have to get kind of lucky with the turnovers for the Titans to be in it. But I think it all starts with stopping the run for the Titans. And if they can do that and maybe slow down this – Detroit Lions buzzsaw of an offense, they might have a chance to force some turnovers and and help the offense out enough for them to put 24 points up on the board. Biggest Lions storylines as Detroit hosts Tennessee. We'll get those to you coming up next. And our Thursday crossover, Locked on Lions and Locked on Titans today, brought to you by our friends at Z-Biotics. Pre-alcohol probiotic drink by Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works, folks. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to help break this byproduct down. Just remember, take Z-Biot or make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. 
Take it at night, drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. And you get 15% off your first order when you use the code locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is back with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL at checkout and you can get 15% off. Matt and Tyler with you, Locked on Lions, Locked on Titans. Uh, you know, do you realize, uh, Tyler, the Lions have never beaten the Tennessee Titans 0-6 since the uh, famous uh, Houston Oilers move and everything else. I don't know if that uh, means anything well, this what, week. What a great thing <laughs> for the Lions coming up this weekend because they're breaking that streak. That's for sure. I'll tell you, I feel like I need one of those pre-alcohol Z-biotics for this season <laughs> that the Titans are having. I should have done that in week one. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy here in Detroit. Like you said, we have the tale of two stories here. Uh, the lions are trying to add pieces, right? Biggest storylines, obviously for your audience. Number one, Aiden Hutchinson's injury continues to kind of loom because the lions are looking right now to add somebody. They've got to make a trade before November 5th. You want to shoot for the stars and talk miles Garrett and Max Crosby. That's one thing, but maybe realistically, you mentioned Arden key before Uh, you said, you don't think Harold Landry, but that would be a name that might be more realistic. Um, or Zadarius Smith, somebody like that. But the Lions did not get great pressure on Sam Darnold last week and still mm-hmm. need to rush the passer a little bit better. But at 5-1, and one, the way they're playing right now the last three weeks on offense, right. wins over Seattle, Dallas, and then this past Sunday, they go into Minnesota, and basically from about the eight-minute mark of the first quarter on, they really were doing whatever they wanted offensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a great point earlier. Jared Goff is having an MVP-type last three weeks. Uh you know, passer rating now leads the league over 110 for him at the top. And uh, the offense is clicking. Big news this week, Jamison Williams, a suspended. second suspension. You know, last yeah. week, their last year was gambling. Now it's performing uh, a performance enhancing substance, which means it's just two games. But, you know, he didn't have a good game this past week, but he was a decoy. And that's somebody the defenses now are scheming for. Yep. And he didn't get off this week, but now not playing. Yeah, it'll open some things up for a Khalif Raymond or a, or a Tim Patrick. I'm assuming Allen Robinson uh, is elevated off the practice squad to play this week. But that's a big loss for the offense. And look, everybody thinks they're going to mop the floor with you guys. But you never want to have a letdown. They had a big game last week with Minnesota in the division. Next week at Green Bay, you just hope there's not sort of some sort of look ahead this week. Yeah, I mean, this definitely is a trap game scenario for the Lions with that Packers matchup laying ahead. And I think to the Jam- Jamison Williams point, you know, it's been a bumpy road starting his career, but he finally started to fit this year. You finally started to oh, yeah. see the vision. He's making downfield plays. He's the field stretcher. It opens up everything under the middle for, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta. Like, it just makes so much sense how he fits within the offense. Uh, you don't want to say that you feel for him because he's making his own mistakes that are causing this. You know, it's not like he's some sort of victim in the situation, but. At the, at the end of the day, it does make it easier on the Titans. The Titans struggle over the middle of the field. Their linebackers are not good in pass coverage. That's where they're vulnerable. And now if your safeties don't have to worry so much about that speed down the field, because Khalif Raymond came from the Titans. I know Khalif yeah. Raymond. You know sure. what I mean? He's a good player, but he's nowhere near the talent level that Williams is. So it, you make it easier on the Titans, and maybe they can settle down more over the middle of the field. And again, you get Jared Goff to third and long. Maybe you could force some turnovers. It does. No way around it. It's not going to kill the Lions offense by any means, but it definitely does hurt them at least marginally. It's funny. uh, Fantasy owners that have Travis Kelsey are going, what's going on? They're saying the same thing about Sam Laporta. So interesting point you bring up about the the Titan linebackers. If they can't cover, maybe this is finally the week. The number 87, who was the best rookie tight end maybe ever last year. Right. uh, In terms of statistically, maybe he gets going this week. Uh, especially now that JMO's not out there. Uh, Laporta, I would expect to get fed the football. Like you mm-hmm. said, if, if that's an issue, the li- linebackers, Ben Johnson, Lions offensive coordinator, will watch the tape. He'll see, Tyler, what you see and yes. uh, and likely do that. And, and watch the Lions run game just for the, for, the, for the Titan viewers and listeners here. Lions run game is really good. Like this offensive mm-hmm. line, arguably best the best in the league. league. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not going to argue it. They're the no? best in the league. All right. Sure. 
Last week, I wouldn't say that because Taylor Decker had a bad game at left tackle. Mm -hmm. Kevin Zeitler was out. Uh, K.O.D.A. Washika played right guard. If Zeitler's back this week, I'd expect a better performance from Decker. And and they just run it. They just run it down your throat. I mean, even if David Montgomery is stopped at the point of attack, somehow, some way, he carries tacklers for three, four yards. A bad yep. Montgomery run is 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 a is a four yard run. And Jameer Gibbs has been just absolutely explosive the last two weeks too. Uh, what a game he had in Minnesota. So Lions kind of butter their bread with uh, with that run game and then the play action game with Goff off of it. And it's uh, it's working to perfection the last three weeks. It's been it's the offense everybody anticipated uh, mm-hmm. these last three games. Yeah, it's the offense that's going to get Ben Johnson a much better contract than he was getting offered last offseason. That's for sure. I think Jameer Gibbs is in line to have have a great game here, too. The Titans play a ton of cover four. They play a ton of uh, man four, where their cornerbacks on the outside are in man coverage, but their safeties are over the middle playing cover four responsibilities. And I think when you play that type of coverage consistently, it opens you up in the flat areas. So if the Lions are smart, which they are, they're going to get Jameer Gibbs into the flats on those little swing passes to the outside, hit him on a flat route, and the Titans cornerbacks typically aren't going to be there. So you're asking your slot cornerback, Roger McCreary, who's going to have his hands full with, with the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown. He's going to have to get hands on him before he can get out to the flat, get out to the curl flat. You're going to have linebackers trying to get from their inside alignment out to the flat to get to Jameer Gibbs. I think over the middle of the field, and you do that enough to Jameer Gibbs on the outside, the linebackers start to creep, and that's when you can really hit them over the middle. I think it's kind of a a tough combination for the Titans to deal with with the talent Gibbs has on the outside and then what St. Brown and Laporta can do over the middle. So if if I'm the Lions, I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. I'm not putting Jared Goff in any kind of danger. We're hitting quick to the outsides when the Titans play that cover four man, and there should be some space out there to work with. Another storyline for Detroit, Tyler, uh, young, younger defense, but really improved. Uh, Brian Branch, uh, you know, I hope locked on Titan fans. Take, he has been phenomenal this year. Mm-hmm. He and Kirby Joseph have really just locked things up on that back end. Two very good safeties, two ball hawks. Branch is playing extremely well. The young corners are getting better. The guy, uh, you know, Terry on Arnold and Meek Robertson are younger. Right. Uh, you know, Arnold got a lot of flags early in the year. Uh, cleaned it up. You didn't hear his name much this past Sunday, which is a good thing. Good. Uh, yeah. Carlton Davis has added some stability back there, and the linebackers are playing very well. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez is, is has been filling in and playing nicely with the Derek Barnes injury. Um, you know, the issue again is going to be pressure on the quarterback. How they can get home from the edge? I think up, you know, in the middle of the. Who do they field. have there on the D line, Matt? Who's who is the the main players on the Lions D line now with the Hutchinson injury? Well, Josh Pascal is the one guy you knew. Remember, it's not just Hutchinson out. Marcus Davenport's gone for the year, and so is Derek right. Barnes. Those were the three top pass rushers. Barnes was a, a Sam linebacker doing some rushing as well. Those mm-hmm. are probably your three best edge guys. They're all gone. Um, right. You know, Pascal's probably number four, and, and he's a good, mm-hmm. good football player. He had a sack this past Sunday, but they're trying anybody out. I'm anticipating that Isaiah Thomas off the Bengals practice squad, who right. was deactivated this past week, will be active. I don't know if James Houston's going to play. He's been deactivated, then activated. He hasn't done much. Uh, Trevor Nowoski, a, a, a Sam linebacker, they've kind of converted to an edge rusher, but they're going to make a deal. They have to uh, because they're a little bit thin. They're losing all of those guys. All right, Matt Derry and Tyler Rowland with you. Locked on Lions, locked on Titans, five and one and one and five uh, here on a Sunday at uh, one o'clock, of course, noon central. Uh, for those Titan fans that are checking us out. When we come back, how do the Titans get get a win somehow? And what are some keys for the Lions? We will do that next here on the Thursday crossover. We're brought to you by Prize Picks. And of course, Locked On Lions and Locked On Titans for this Thursday, also presented to you by our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Starting the season off right with a big return on FanDuel. You get a hunch in the middle of the game. You can check out all the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Lions and Titans this week. You want to do money line, you want to do spread, whatever it is, player props, you can do that on FanDuel. Also, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets. Just all you got to do is place one $5 bet, win or lose, at FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. World Series going on later on this week, college football, whatever you like and are looking to do, do it at the best place to do it. FanDuel, America's 
number one sports book. Matt and Tyler with you on a Thursday crossover, Titans and uh, Lions. All right, Tyler, uh, you, you go first here. What are some keys for the Titans? How do they how do they steal one at Ford Field? Well, I said it at the top of the show. The, the reality for the Titans is this is going to be a very difficult game to win no matter what. But if they're going to do it, they're going to need to run the ball. They're going to need to force turnovers. And they're going to need something special. You know, like that. that's, that's what it takes. They're going to need a little bit of Mo City magic. I'll call it like they got to <laughs> stop the run. Like I talked about before, because if you let Jared Goff get third and manageables, it's going to be too easy for those guys over the middle of the field to get four or five yards. So you got to get them in third and eight, third and 10 and hope that you can stop them there. And that all starts with stopping this run game. If they do that, then they got to force turnovers that they got to win the turnover battle by two or three to have a chance to win this game. Cause it's not just about stopping the lions offense. It's about putting your offense in a position to get some easy points. And then again, they're going to need a little bit of magic on the offensive side of the ball, in my opinion. They're going to need a, a crazy play to break their way. They're going to need somebody to have them. They're going to need Calvin Ridley to finally go nuts and haul in a deep pass past the safeties. They're, they're just going to need something that they don't get week to week, and that's somebody to step up and, and be a great player. The Titans have, have kind of... When they've been good, they've just kind of done, it's been tight end screens, it's been a, a quick, you know, 8-10 to 10 over the middle, but they haven't had any deep explosive plays in the passing game for quite some time now. So they're just going to need somebody to step up and make a play. So run the ball, get the Lions in third and long, create some turnovers, and hope for a little bit of magic and a couple of plays on offense where the football just breaks your way and something happens. I mean, that's all they can hope for here. But the odds are this is just a total mismatch in terms of talent on a roster and, and the setup of a team and the culture and being on the road in Detroit. Just nothing favors the Titans in this one. So they're going to need a little bit of magic to be able to win this. You mentioned Calvin Ridley before. A quick follow-up. Uh, is he in a better mood lately? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how he would be. Going back through the film of Mason Rudolph, there are so many times. Everybody's mad at Calvin Ridley. He's dropped a couple passes I mean, you look at the best wide receivers in the league, you're going to see their names at the top of the list and drops too. Tyree Kill, DK Metcalf, Debo Samuel. Like, those are the guys who have dropped the football the most over the last five years. So you can make up for that with great plays, but he's been open so much. A top five player in the NFL at creating separation this season, and he just doesn't get the football a lot of the time. So I know it's been ugly for him, but I, I can't take, take aim at Calvin Ridley. He's open and he ain't getting the ball. Interesting for the Lions, uh, just to transition here, you know, some keys is not to take this team lightly. I don't think they will. Under Dan Campbell, this team is all business. Right. They are one week at a time. But again, the look ahead to next week, 425, Fox in that primetime window at Green Bay and Lambeau Field, I, I think is a huge game for this football team. And they've had success at Lambeau the last couple of years. And, you know, you sandwich this game between at Minnesota and at Green Bay. It just like you said, it's it's a letdown. It's it, it's a trap, and the Lions can't allow that to happen. They've got to play good football, take care of the football. Last thing you want to be doing is giving Rudolph and that Titan offense, which isn't great, like you said, but just a short field. Um, right. No gifts this week. Just play yep. your game, do your thing, run the football, and 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 be smart about it. I think that is going to be a you know a big key for the Lions. Blocking Jeffrey Simmons, I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, obviously, the Lions. Uh, uh, interior offensive line has done done some very good things, but mm -hmm. this is a guy that's a game wrecker, and uh, I think that would be a key for the Lions anytime. And also, kind of again, the edge rushing situation, finding out what you have, um, and also finding out maybe about another receiver uh, with Jamison Williams out. Who steps up? Um, maybe now with Jamo gone, they're gonna maybe the Titans figure all right, let's just take fourteen away and try not to have Amon Ra beat him who's going to step up and make some plays. But I think guys will. Tim Patrick, who came over from Denver, has done a really nice job and yeah. has made some nice plays. So um, that's how I look at it. I, I You know, prediction-wise, of course, we're both going to take the Lions in this game. Yeah. I Tyler, mean, I, I just wonder, though, if this is one of those slobber knocker, you know, 27, 20 games where you go, man, I, I thought the Lions were going to blow them out. Um, or well, we is it see just, it go the same. Like, you know, the Lions – Human nature, they could be looking ahead a little bit, knowing that they don't got to be a steak in this game. If they're a cheeseburger, they're still going to win. 
you know, but the Titans could, you know, make it close early. And then at the end of the game, the talent deficit just goes in the Lions' favor. So I think it could be a little closer than Lions fans want. One thing I do want to caution Lions fans before we go, do not think that your edge rush issues have improved if you do well against the Titans. The Titans' right tackle position is an absolute disaster right now. The coach even called it a big problem in the media. So whether it's Nicholas Petit Ferrer, Leroy Watson, they sign Isaiah Prince, uh, who used to play right tackle for the for the Bengals during their yeah. uh, Super Bowl run where they had a miserable offensive line. Just you're probably going to have a good week in the pass rush lines, fans. It's fool's gold. You still need to make a move. So I just want Lions fans to keep that in their mind as we go into this game. Tyler, a pleasure, man. Hang in there. I know it's not been easy down there, but uh, when's the new stadium coming? When, when, are we, uh, when are we getting that? It comes out in 2027 is what the expectation is right now that that's when they will go into it. And honestly, I've been looking at that as a lot of people want to fire Rand Carthon, the Titans GM, and fire Brian Callahan because their expectations for the season have been subverted so far. But to me, you give this group, the coach, the GM, until the new stadium opens. If if things don't get better in the final season before the new stadium 2026, then you cut bait with everybody, hire new people, re-energize the fan base, and go into the new stadium with a little bit more hope. But 2027 is the expectation right now. Will Will Levis be the quarterback when they open the new stadium? No, I, I will say no. And just so we're clear, I know you mentioned Rudolph earlier, so it sounds like you're already on board. But if any fans, Titans or Lions, were wondering, Will Levis will not play in this game. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN reported that on Wednesday. Um, good chance he's back for Week 9, but you will not see Will Levis. And honestly, it's like the Indianapolis Colts. Playing their backup quarterback is more scary than playing their starting quarterback at this point in time. So I'm sure Lions fans would prefer Will Levis, but he will not be playing in this game. For Tyler Rowland, Locked on Titans. Matt Derry, Locked on Lions. This has been the Thursday Crossover, brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks.